Shame on those who sided with the corrupt Spanish government. How can you call it undemocratic? How can you call it undemocratic for a people to vote? How can you call it undemocratic when they threatened 750 mayors with arrest? Undemocratic when they boasted about decapitating a democratically elected Catalan government and unleashed 15,000 security forces, Spanish security forces, on the people of Catalonia. Conference, there is a statue in Glasgow, just two minutes from my office, called La Pasionara, no Pasara. And that monument is dedicated to 534 Scottish volunteers of the International Brigade who left Scotland and died fighting against Franco and his fascists. If that proud memory, if that proud memory means anything at all, then our trade unions, our political parties, whether they be the SNP, whether they are Labour or whether they are Green, should unite in solidarity with the people of Catalonia. Clara, if extradited and convicted at the age of 61, could face a sentence of up to 33 years, effectively taking her last breath in a Madrid prison. So silence is not an option for those on the side of justice. The arrest warrant accuses Clara of orchestrating violence at over 2,000 polling stations, yet not one single Spanish police officer has been prosecuted for their violent actions against a defenseless po population. The warrant, as far as we are concerned and we have publicly stated, is a grotesque distortion of the truth by the Spanish state. The court will begin on Ed in Edinburgh on the 30th of July, and as Kaylin has said earlier, we desperately need your support. We are taking on a Spanish government who have unlimited resources at their disposal. We have a proud history in this country of protecting those who face a grave risk of injustice. And as a lawyer, I say this, of course, I want to win and to stop Clara's extradition. But even if we do that, even if we win the legal case, Clara would remain trapped as a political exile forever. Today's motion is important because it recognizes that whilst we must stand in solidarity with Clara, we must fight for all political exiles to return home and for the unconditional release by Spain of all political prisoners. Clara, let me make this important point. And I know there's been some discussions with members of the media today. Clara, nor her legal team, neither expects nor demands that our government interferes with our robust, impartial, independent judicial process. That is, as far as we concerned, the bottom line. No interference, because if there was interference, then we would be no different from the Spanish government. And I respect that as well as far as it's This is your opportunity to make history, and as a party, we should never, ever be afraid to raise our voices for the truth. And since the dawn of civilization, for all those pessimists that are out, not, I don't think there's any pessimists here, but I think outside, uh, there's a few of them, and in certain political parties, since the dawn of civilization, people say to me often, say, no, you can't win. Well, since the dawn of civilization, we have seen the tyranny of empires, but history is littered with the ruin of such empires. And each ruin is a monument, not only to mankind's failures, but to the inherent ability of mankind to fight for freedom and to overcome tyranny. If Clara wins, then Catalonia wins. And if Catalonia wins, then Scotland would win. So thank you, um, and I hope that Congress will pass this motion. And Clara will be the legislation. since I put my feet back in Scottish territory in March. What you're doing just shows your deep belief in democracy and human rights, and Catalans are deeply grateful to you for that.
by doing this, you're supporting democracy through the world, through Europe, at your at Scotland and in Catalonia. So thanks, thanks, thanks. Thank you very, very much. Anwar and Clara Pansati, thank you very much for joining today at Broadcast of Scotland. Well, start off with you, Clara. Do you want to give us the background of how you've gotten here today with yourself in Scotland? Yes. Well, I was a professor at St Andrews. I've been a professor at St Andrews for the last three and a half years. Uh, so, in the summer, in July 17, I was asked to join the cabinet in the Catalan uh, uh, government and I accepted and I took the uh, position of Minister of Education in the Catalan Cabinet and that was on the months and weeks uh, preceding the referendum so I was the Minister of Education during the referendum day. The schools uh, were open for the people of Catalonia to vote. We were uh, severely repressed by the Spanish police but we voted nonetheless. Uh, so after that, uh, you know, the, the story is known. Some of us uh, went to Brussels, uh, uh, others uh, were uh, kept uh, in prison and they are still in preventive prison. Uh, you know, I was in, uh, in Brussels for a few weeks but then I returned to my job at St Andrews and that's why I'm here. And Amr, what happens next? Obviously there's a, a, a big court case going on just now with issues going on in Catalonia. So, so what happens next in the process? Well, um, Clara faces two charges. Um, one is a charge of rebellion with violence and the second charge is misappropriation of public funds. If she is extradited and convicted, she faces up to 33 years in a Madrid prison. So we go to court on the 30th of July um, for nearly four weeks um, in which we will fight the Kingdom of Spain um, who will be have on appearing on their behalf um, somebody from the Crown Office um, and we formed a legal team to, to, to fight this battle and we're fighting it on many fronts. So first of all we believe this is a politically motivated prosecution. We believe that Spain stands accused of abusing European arrest warrant. Um, we believe that if if Clara was to be extradited then then she stands in real danger of having her human rights abused, um, that she cannot be guaranteed a right to a fair trial, that the impartiality of the Spanish judiciary has already been challenged repeatedly. Uh, and to be honest, whilst there is some hope that Rajoy is gone, um, the attitude of the Socialist Party previously um, doesn't stand up to much scrutiny in terms of their, their dealings with the Catalan people. Um, and, and fundamentally, um, people should remember this because everybody keeps saying to me, and of course we're gonna win. Um, we, nobody can say that because, first of all, it's for the judiciary to decide what happens to Clara. Um, secondly, it is an uphill struggle, it is a battle of David versus Goliath. The Spanish state has all the resources at their uh, disposal. Um, normally, in an extradition case in this country, it takes 45 minutes on average if it's a European country, because it's accepted as normal that a European country is as an independent judiciary, it is impartial, and the courts will be able to deal with the process. In this case, of course, we are unique. It's unique in UK legal history that we're having to fight this case on these fronts by saying that the Spanish government has politically prosecuted this case, that um, Clara cannot be guaranteed her rights. Um, I, I, normally when we go to court, that would be for a country, let's say, in Africa, in Russia, in Asia, somewhere like that. Nobody has ever challenged the European government on that basis. So yes, we do face an uphill struggle, but, but, but we, we are determined to fight. Um, and of course, um, Clara has been overwhelmed, as I have, by the tremendous support that we've received from people across Scotland, across the UK, um, and right across Europe. Clara, how are you feeling for the future? I'm feeling um, optimist. I mean, I'm feeling that we, you know, we have an uphill struggle, but I'm ready to fight it. And um, I trust uh, the system in Scotland. I think that, you know, there is uh, guarantees and due process and independence here. And I just hope things will work out. Clara, Amar, thank you very much for